Good afternoon, welcome back to the 120th. Today I'm going to be doing something that I've been threatening for a very long time. We are going to reskin the Bronica S2A. And by reskin, I mean uh, take off all of the existing leatherette and replace it with something new and a bit different. I have done some running repairs to this as I've gone along and I've sort of stuck down a few bits and, and glued down a few corners where they've lifted, but it's still pretty scruffy and it's all sort of coming apart in places. I've also, uh, where I've swapped out bits of this for replacement parts, like this for example, this um, waist level finder was taken from a different camera. Uh, and it's actually a slightly different color leatherette. So this is a, a more of a, a gray. It might not be that obvious, but it's obvious to me. So I'm gonna take it all off and I'm gonna replace it all. That is the plan and hopefully it will look uh, better than it does right now. The process, what I'm gonna need to do uh, is obviously remove all the leatherette, but I'm gonna need to get this down to just bare metal and remove all remnants of the old glue before I try and uh, put on a new uh, cover, new skin. Um, I have a new skin. Uh, I bought it from a company called Millie's Cameras. They are also, incidentally, uh, the same place that I get all my light seal foam from. They're really useful, actually. There's still some really useful bits on there. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I bought myself this. It's kind of a very dark red snake skin. It's like a faux snake skin, of course. No snakes were harmed. One thing that is very important to note is that I do not have a kit here. So this is not pre-cut in the right uh, shapes and, and sizes and whatever. This is just a straight sheet of um, fake snake skin. It does, incidentally, after that wonderful um, video that I made of what is the best glue to use when putting, when gluing leatherette to your camera, which you can find uh, here. Um, I have gone out and bought uh, a, a, a skin, snake skin, a, a leatherette uh, that has uh, sticky stuff already on it. So let's hope that works. The plan is to, as carefully as possible, lift the sections of leatherette off. Some of them will come off easier than others. And then use either the remnants of the glue uh, that are on them. For example, this one is still pretty sticky. Or uh, I'll use a little bit of uh, PVA or something um, to stick this to the back of this, like so. And then when I've got a full set stuck to the back of here, I will then get a cutting mat and a scalpel and I will very carefully cut around the old pieces uh, to end up with a new set that should be in the correct shapes and sizes. That's the plan. Uh, Want to see if it works? You're in the right place. This is coming off beautifully. I wonder if this has been redone. It does look like it has been. There we have a naked Bronica S2A. Next job is to get all this old glue off. And believe me, this is not easy. Right then, we've come out to the garage slash studio slash uh, workshop. I have an arsenal of solvents ready to go. White spirits, methylated spirits, MEK, naphtha, IPA, and of course, the trusty end of the road, acetone. So hopefully something in there will shift this because this needs to be sparkling clean by the time we're done here. So we're gonna take some um, Q-tips and uh, try a few things on here and see what moves it. Let's start with plain old 
white spirit. I tried a number of things when I was doing this before and nothing shifted. That's not doing a bad job, you know. Let's try a bit of MEK. Methyl ethyl ketone. Oh, maybe. Okay, MEK is a possibility. I'll try with some naphtha, otherwise known as lighter fluid. Lighter fluid, no good. All right, I think we go with the MEK for now. Oh, it really does do a good job actually, especially if you get it on in decent quantities. Still gonna be a long job. Right, my tip of the week, and that is these things. I found the other day, and they are amazing. They are apparently, so these are specifically for um, those tiny little corners where uh, Q-tips or cotton buds just can't reach. Uh, and they are apparently glue applicators for fake eyelashes, so beauticians use them. Uh, and they are just perfect. They're tiny, smaller than Q-tips. Perfect for getting into these little edges here. Get right in there. I won't bore you with the whole thing. The next really interesting thing to happen will probably be me getting overwhelmed by these fumes. Uh, so I'll try and make sure the camera's rolling for that. done. Shiny in there. That was hard work. That took me about two hours. Two hours of solid scrubbing. But it's ready. Uh, it's ready for the new skin. So next job, back inside, cut out the new skin and uh, start applying. It's better be worth it. Right then, that's that step done. Check this out. Talk about shiny, hey? Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. I would say that there's a temptation just to leave it like that, but it's kind of like, I think this is, it ruins it. You can see all the screw holes. And I mean, this is um, how you, the, you, you can now see how you uh, dismantle a Bronica if you ever wanted to. For example, the sides, the screws to remove the sides are all un hidden under the leatherette. Uh, so let's move on to the next stage and let's uh, put on the new skin, the snake skin. Mm. Now, uh, the sharp minded amongst you will have potentially been screaming at the screen for some time now uh, that this plan ain't gonna work. This piece, for example, this is the bottom and the front. That is not gonna work because it's not symmetrical. And therefore, a, what we'll end up with, a mirror image of this, uh, will not fit. So, uh, options are take this off, stick it on this side and cut around it, or take this off and stick it upside down on the back um, so that it's leatherette facing in, sticky side up. So we'll get a cutting mat and a nice fresh scalpel. Lovely. Uh, and let us begin cutting around some of these designs. Start with essentially the easiest shape. promising. It's not too bad, eh? Not too bad. 
could have been better, could have been worse. Right then, the next job is gonna to be to cut out some circles. Now, circles are not easy to get right. So, as always, uh, where there is a delicate uh, and precise job that needs doing, I shall do it with a hammer. From another job that I've done, I've actually got some uh, leather punches. So, that is what we are going to use. And we are going to, let's think about which way, yeah, this should be fine from this side. So it's as simple as, there is a small circle of perfectly circular little disc. And here we have it, it's finished. Um, I quite like the look, uh, I think the snake skin suits it. Um, I'm not super thrilled with the job that I've done. I'm gonna take this off obviously, that needs a smaller dot, but I haven't got around to it yet. The real test will be getting out and about with it and uh, trying it out, out in the real world. I quite like it. Um, I think it suits it. Uh, it was a lot more difficult than I was expecting. Uh, and I was expecting it to be quite tricky, but it's taken me uh, probably maybe five or six hours spread over two days. Um, they are not easy cameras to reskin, that's for sure. Uh, there are, I've just counted them, there are 20 different bits of leather. If you were getting a kind of a pre-cut, you know, laser cut set of, of leatherettes, and I think that'd be a lot easier. There's definitely a lot of my troubles and my issues came from having to cut the pieces myself uh, and finding that the existing leatherette that I'd taken off the camera had stretched a bit uh, or uh, was not quite, you know, had shrunk and that was why it was coming off. Uh, and so I was having to cut and recut pieces repeatedly. But I'm happy with it. I think it looks good. I think it, uh, Definitely different, isn't it? I am gonna get this out pretty soon. In fact, I think I will take it with me to, I'm going to the Analog Spotlight event in Worcester this weekend. Um, I'll be taking a camera, I'll be doing a video there, saying hi to all the various people in the analog world in the UK. Um, and I will be picking up my new lens boards from Simon Forster. Um, so that should be fun. I'll do a quick video from there. I'm gonna take the Bronica with me. I'll hopefully take some photos there as well. Loads more stuff coming up on the channel. So look up here, look along the line. There's a Fuji ST605 over here for some reason. I don't know how that's got up there. That's crept in there. There's a Lomo Diana F on the end there. You think it's just off your screen, somewhere about here. Um, which I'll be taking out for a spin at some point. I also have a Holger, which I'm gonna be trying out for the first time. Never tried a Holger before, not on the shelf. Uh, then we have a Pentacon 6, we have a Kiev 88, uh, we have a couple of 620 cameras, they're going to be getting a run out soon, so don't miss that one. And then of course we've got the 2 3, no, sorry, the 3 4 speed graphic, for which I now have some dry plates, so I'm going to be shooting some plates, some proper glass plates. Uh, and then we've got the 4 by 5 speed graphic, uh, which the lens boards will be coming back for pretty soon, and I will therefore be taking that out and giving that a run as a portrait camera. Plus darkroom i'm going to be printing uh, so if you are not currently subscribed then please do subscribe um, and you will be notified when all this excitement which i promise finally materializes i will leave you with one final bit of joy from the bronica s2a on top of its now stunning looks. Is yes. Ready? <laughs> you don't really need to look at it, do you? Just listen. It's like an audio. An auditory camera. I don't know. I'm gonna go now before I start getting more shit.